What's going on guys? So I'm going to do a unboxing of the Cobb short ram intake uh, for the Mazda Speed 3. This is for the 2007 Mazda Speed 3. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to do an unboxing of this, show you guys what's in the box, and hopefully make an install video for you guys. And I'm pretty newbish, so hopefully this will help some of you guys who are also starting out to see kind of the mistakes I make and make sure you guys don't make those anyway. But hopefully it should be a pretty easy install. So yeah, excuse all the excuse all the clutter. Normally when I do unboxings for my tech channel and stuff, if I do them here on this desk, they're usually really small. So uh, this is a pretty big box, and this is just covering up my address. So let's go ahead and get into this unboxing. So we'll go ahead and just cut it open here. Let's see, hard to do. I've got lights. I've got a big box and I've got camera. Let's see what we can do here. Got to move around here so I don't mess up everything. All right. So, got that open now. See what we got in the box itself. So we got Cobb tuning. Just some stuff about some of the other products that Cobb sells. Hoping to get an access port relatively soon. Who knows? Let it happen because it does cost a little bit of money. Then we have some instructions. This is supposed to come with some pretty good instructions, so hopefully that'll help a lot. And then we have ooh, this feels cool. We have the tube. This is silicone. I believe I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So this is gonna this is what's gonna you know replace your stock airbox. And then let's see what we have here. Oh, awesome! I didn't had no idea that this was included. Well, this is definitely going on my car because I don't have one right now. So that's awesome. That obviously I didn't say, but that's a license plate for him. Let's see what else we get in here. I don't think I need a knife for this. So we have this part. Now, like I said, I'm pretty noobish, so I don't know what any of these things are called. But this is actually really heavy. I thought it was going to be some cheap plastic. Or not like not cheap plastic, but I thought it was going to be really light and just plasticky. But it, I mean, it's plastic, but it feels very heavy. That's what it looks like, by the way. And then we have. Let's pull this box out of here. Whoa! Hit the camera there. Sorry about that. Let's move this out of there. Then we have the filter itself. Oh gosh, this is just terrible. With some cables, or not cable stuff, but uh, clamps. And then we have the bracketing software. This is metal. Thought it was gonna be plastic, like I said before, for the other thing, but it's actually metal, so that's very nice. Ooh, so much stuff. And then we have some information on how to clean it. So. That is the uh, unboxing of this Cobb filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and move outside and show you guys my installation of this thing. Okay, so we're here with the car. Got the instructions right here, got all my tools. And basically they're just gonna read through the steps and go through them with you. So it's gonna be really, um, kind of a really like step-by-step, -step, just reading the instructions, but hopefully you can actually like, see what I'm doing and know what to do with these instructions but the instructions are really well laid out so that's what's going on all right these birds are going to get really annoying but maybe it's a little bit of joyous noise but um yeah so don't mind the birds so disconnect the battery went ahead and did that then remove stock intercooler cover that's this right here i don't know if you can see it but the intercooler cover that's that plastic part that covers the intercooler take that off already did that that's pretty easy to do you just use a 10 millimeter socket and uh, unbolt it and then take it off and then now we're going to do use 10 millimeter socket loosen the hose clamp that connects the accordion rubber hose to the intake box loosen the hose clamp that connects the accordion rubber hose to the turbo inlet unhook the two metal clips on the right side of the intake box so it's got arrows to everything i need to do so i'm going to go ahead and do that so I'm zoomed in here so you can see which is the first one I'm going to do. So this is the first one I'm going to take off. It says to go ahead and loosen that. And I think I'm tightening it right now. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. So just loosening that up with a 10 millimeter socket. And one, two. Oh, I 
since I got a long ways to go. Didn't want it to come out and fall. Keep going here. All right. Let's keep it loosening. All right. You don't have to take it off. Just loosen it. Now it says to loosen the one that goes to the turbo inlet pipe, which is this one right here. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to need a um, 10 millimeter open wrench for that. So that's what I've got right here. And we're going to go ahead and just, hopefully that fits. Fits marvelously on this side. Let's see how much I need to loosen it. Need to clean my engine. It's not filthy, but I haven't cleaned it in a while, so I need to do that. I'm not sure how much I have to loosen it, but I think that's pretty good for now. And now it says to unhook these two hooks. It's very easy. If you're changing the air box, that's how you take it out. So that's it for that. And now we are going to go to step four. So it says unplug the MAF air, air harness, airflow, sorry. Unplug the mass airflow harness from the MAF sensor, pushing down on the tab and pulling away from you. Remove the two screws. I'll get into that in a second. So just put this back down and then bring you over here. So there is the, this is the mass, mass airflow sensor. So I'm just gonna push down this little tab here. Well, let's see what I should push down here. Don't wanna break any of this. So let's see, there we go. So if you see these two little ridges on the back, I don't know how well you can see it on video, but there's two kind of like ridges on each side, push down on that, that'll lift it up and you just pull out like that. And this is what's connecting it to your computer. So this is the actual sensor. So you really want to be careful with this because if that breaks, that's like 200 bucks you have to replace. So just push that to the side. Okay, so now we have a screwdriver and we're just going to go ahead and unscrew the harness here. So uh, you got to, again, like I said, be very careful with this. When you tighten it down, you don't want to over tighten it. Make sure you keep these in a safe place. And these are not in there very tight at all. So just make sure this is all safe. Got these two, I'm gonna put them in my pocket because I'm pretty sure those are the only two that you need. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove this. And this is very valuable, so make sure you put this in a safe place. I actually just put it on my car seat so I know where it is and no one's gonna go in there. So it's safe and now we can move on. So step five, remove the 90 degree plastic elbow from the accordion rubber hose using the pliers to pinch pinch the hose clamp together working out the elbow. Move the 90 degree plastic elbow the hose clamp for this elbow side as we'll use it for the Cobb SF intake. So let's zoom in here. I'll show you what we're talking about. So this is what we're talking about. Now I think I might need to go get some new pliers but if we move this out of the way, actually I'll bring the camera over here because you can actually see it better. So if you look, this is what we were talking about. You want to uh, close that or rather open it up. So you're gonna use the pliers to clamp that down and then pull this, ow, ow that hurt. Snap back on my finger. Um, so pull that down and then you're gonna wanna pull this out. It's really tough on mine, but hopefully it'll come out here. Okay, so my elbow is acting Annoying, so I'm gonna deal with that on my own off video, but hopefully it'll work very easily for you I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing wrong there. So next thing you do is Remove the lower section of the intake box squeeze together the white retaining clip and pull up slide the rubber stop away from front away from you and The rubber retaining strap on the left side of the box by pulling up like this. Okay, so what we need to do is pull this thing that I actually just pulled out this is a rubber clip which is hanging right here and basically you just pull up I don't know how well you can see it but basically it's hanging like this you pull up and out and then it'll slip off it's very easy it's just holding it in place it's like a rubber band so and put that to the side 
And then these are the white retaining clips they're talking about. You pull them together and then pull up and then that came out. So that's very easy. Just pulled out the top, it's all zoomed in so you can't really see, but it just pulled out the top of the air box. Put that to the side. Okay, so with some assistance, I got the elbow out. Now that is away to the side. And apparently I was supposed to take this off earlier. I didn't see that into the directions, but took the top off. So now we're caught up with the instructions. So now we're going to go to the next page because I did all that. Now take the smaller of the two hose clamps provided, place over the medium sized dampener. Oh wait, hold on. Missed something again. To remove the lower section of the oh, gotta remove the lower tech lower section of the intake box. So this should just pull up, I believe. There we go. There's two little rubber gaskets that are holding it in. Did you get that out? This is all there is to it. So put that to the side and got the intake out. Once you have this box out, the whole air, air uh, intake box out, and you're gonna wanna just remove this hose from the uh, turbo inlet pipe. So hopefully you can get this. Let me loosen it a little bit more. So I just pulled out the tube. It was very hard, but that's because I was looking at it the wrong way. But um, just keep pulling. You're not gonna break anything. Um, but if you feel like you're gonna break anything, then maybe just reevaluate what you're doing. See if you're messing up. Like I said, I'm very noobish, so I'm just doing this all from reading paperwork, so I have really no experience in this, so hopefully this helps some of you guys. But yeah, I got the hose out, so now we're on to the next step. Okay, so that was the removal. Now we are fully removed. Now we're gonna start the installation. So it says take the uh, intake, and then take the smaller of the two clamps. So that's what I have here. And then it says to place it over the medium size diameter. So that's this, I'm assuming, because it's not the large one. I'm just gonna say it's a small, uh, medium, and that's the small. So that's what I'm assuming here. So go ahead and slide it over. So this is how it's gonna sit in. So this is gonna go over here. It's gonna slide right over it. Let me pull this over here. It's going to slide on it. Let's get it in there. There we go, pushing it in. And it is all the way on, so. Oh, I'm an idiot. I gotta pull it off and put it on the wrong way. Huh. I guess I don't really have to, but no, that's good. I didn't put it on the wrong way, I just thought I did. So now that is sitting in there and move on to the next step. So now we are going to install this puppy, the elbow. So let's see what we do here. Oh. Hopefully I don't break anything. I always end up breaking stuff, but hopefully I won't this time. So. So one thing that I forgot to mention before installing this elbow is that you're going to need to take off the clamp from the other um, accordion valve. Put that on here. So put that there. And we're going to go ahead and put that in. So let's go ahead and clamp this. Now I'm not sure if this should go over. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Pull that. And twist it in. Alright, so got it in there. Sorry, I cut a little bit, but that's just because it's taking me a little bit to do it. So now I'm going to pull this. Just insert it as far as it goes. Keep pushing. Okay, don't mind the uh, lawnmower in the background. Hopefully it's not too loud, but got this in. And now we're going to take these two. Loosen them up and install the mounting bracket. Okay, so just remove these two bolts here and they're really tight on mine. So, that's why I didn't show me actually doing it. But now we're gonna put this on there like that and tie this down. So, let's go ahead and tie this down here. And there's one. And 
there. It's too not tight yet, but just because I want to make sure everything is in the right spot before I tighten it down. Just making sure I'm doing everything right. So let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. extension that's why so. I don't have to be super tight because it's really not holding very much it's fell off again so on to the next step okay so now we are going to install the um, actual thing that holds the filter so this is kind of what it looks like let's let it focus in here anyway that's what it looks like just follow your instructions I'm gonna do that off camera just so it's faster, but just follow that and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. And what I did was went ahead and installed the bracket to the uh, gasket uh, separately. I measured it all up so it fit perfectly. And now going to install that in there. So uh, I've got to put the other hose camp that came with the box in there, on there so that when you put this in, you can clamp down. Let's put this in there. Ooh. Okay, so now I have this installed. Now it is time to put the O2 sensor in. Now they give you these special little nuts and they give you an Allen wrench. So go get the O2 sensor and put it back in where it puts it. So here is the O2 sensor. Be careful with it and just put it back in the slot. Fits perfectly just like before and then use the provided screws to install it. So pretty small, so make sure you don't lose them. And you don't have to do it very tight. Just kind of give it one good twist to make sure it's in there. Nothing very tight at all because you do not want to crack this. So, put this in. Wow, hope you caught that on video. Anyway, good thing about having an intake like this is that if you drop something, you just kind of reach down there and pick it up. With the stock airbox, there's no way you could do that. So let me try that again without failing. All right, so now that that is in, let's go ahead and re-plug this back in. Very easy. And now we are ready to put the actual filter on. So that comes with a clamp on it like this. Just slide it on and tighten down. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to tighten it down just cause it's a little bit faster. You can either use that or a eight millimeter, I believe. But I'm just gonna use the screwdriver cause it's faster. So make sure it's nice and tight. Then Go around checking all your other stuff, make sure it's nice and tight. And we're about done. Making sure everything is tight. Oops. Now everything's on there pretty good, so if it's not super tight, it's okay. It doesn't have to be super tight, but everything is there. And we are done. It is extremely hot out here and I'm dying, but there we go, got it in. So let's turn on and see how it sounds. All right, so it's a couple days after I did the install. My uh, camera ran out of battery and stuff, so I just didn't want to deal with it that day. And the uh, audio on it isn't too great, so I switched over to my iPhone and now I'm in a parking lot out here, so hopefully you guys can hear what it sounds like. So this is in the car driving and I have the Cobb SRI filter and the, what is it, um, I always forget the name of this, the forge bypass valve. So that's what I've got my setup here. So hopefully you can hear it okay. It's very hard to do with one hand. All right, let's see. Let me shift. All right, there we go. So, hopefully you can hear that. And then I'll go ahead and open the hood right now and show you guys. Ugh.
Okay, so I switched to the other camera and this is that's my engine right there. So I'll go ahead and do a test rev and then I'll drive.